There's nothing like fresh produce that you've grown yourself on your small farm. Today we're talking to Sam from Horsley Wholesale and he's sharing with us his Nonna's recipe for beautiful marinated olives. If you've got an olive tree at home, grab yourself a cup of tea. This will be good. Today's video is brought to you by Farm Style Insurance. If you've got a small property from two to 100 hectares and a turnover of less than $50,000 a year and you're into this sort of great stuff, making your own food, then check the link in the description if it's been more than 12 months since you've looked at your insurance. A lot of insurance packages out there for small farms don't cover what you need or perhaps provide too much cover and waste your money. Check out Farm Style Insurance. It's made for small farms. Right, Sam, let's get into the olives, mate. This is your Nonna's recipe? This is Nonna's recipe, yep. And I don't totally understand all of it because when I asked Nonna, why do we do that? She said, we just do. Okay, So, but it works. But it works. And I've had the olives, they're really tasty. They're good. All right, let's yep. get started, mate. Now, we're, you're gonna take us through from the very beginning. From the very beginning. So Sam, as I say in the classics, here's some that you prepared earlier, mate. You've had these in brine now for a couple of weeks. Yeah, they've been in brine for about 20 days those fellas there. Yep. Um, it's about a 50 day process, but depending on how much bitter you want left in your olives. So so nearly two months, bank on two, two months, months from picking the olives yep. to being ready. Now, when you pick these off your tree, you cut them by the look of it, right down to the seed? Yeah, you cut them all the way down the bone, and that helps. Just on one side? Just, just on one side, just yep. Like peeling, peeling peas? Yep, like peeling peas, just yep. a little knife, clank, cut it, and throw it into a bucket of water. And you do that so you can let all the acid and brine and yucks out of the out of the olive. Okay, now the water that you put these olives in, it's got to have the right amount of salt and you're going to show us how to do that, how to set up the brine bucket. Yep. And then you're going to be changing that brine every two weeks during that six week process. That's right, yeah. So to set the brine up in the bucket, um, there's a, about 15 kilos worth of olives yep. in this bucket. And I know it's about half a bucket of water. So this is a 20 litre bucket. We're going to be putting about 10 litres of water in there, roughly. Roughly. All they're, these measurements, mate, they're all... Yeah, they're all... Thumb. So and, people need to get too concerned about measuring everything. Right. Yeah, so you don't have to be too fussed about how much, but getting the right amount of salt to make the brine is the important part. We just use normal salt, whatever you can get your hands on. Yep. But the right, perc right percentage is you get an egg, an ordinary egg. An egg. An egg, and that's what Nanda Salvina said. And all you do is you put like half a bag of salt in, mix it up, and once it stops turning, if the egg sinks, it needs more salt. You keep putting salt in until the egg floats. Because obviously fresh eggs, you've got to use a fresh, fresh egg, egg this yep. one, straight out of the chook's bum. That's right, these ones are, yep. Fresh eggs should sink in water. Absolutely. So we want it to just start floating, floating. and then we know the salt concentration's right. Yeah. Now you were saying off camera, there's no such thing as the, as the ideal measurement of salt apart from the floating egg because different water has different hardness. That's right, different hardness in the water and, 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 and that sort of affects it. And what amazes me is how these older people knew this and how they knew to use an egg to get the right... Science of food. Unreal. It, it's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? It absolutely is. Now, on the first soak, you only leave the olives in for a couple of days, I believe? Yeah, that's right. So I change it after two days on the first wash down. Yep. After two days, I get rid of it. The water goes that greenish, lucky, manky sort, sort of, of colour real fast. So I get rid of it. Salt's cheap, you know, yep. and... I want to make a good quality product so we can eat good stuff, so. So two days soak. Yep. Change over the brine. Yep. Two weeks soak for the next six weeks. Six, that's right, yeah. And then we're going to see at the end how to check if our olives are ready. That's right. For the brine there, Sam, you to check for that as well. Yeah, you always get one of your wife's best plates. It's got to be one of the best ones. One of the best ones, yep. And you just put the, that on there and. Am I getting you in trouble with your wife again? Probably. Right. But that's all right, mate. And that's it. And that's, that's all set to go for another two weeks. So plate on top to keep all olives submerged under the brine. That's right. Well, Sam, we've got our olives soaking away in the brine here and they're gonna stay in there for another two weeks for another change for the full six week that's period. Right. How do I know when they're, when they're ready? Like, 
Well, an olive looks like an olive, and it's always going to look like an olive. Yeah, this is the part of the job that really isn't that good. Yeah. So the only way you know to know if they're ready yep. is you take a bite. No. Oh. No. Yeah. No. No. No, 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 no. I want it to be known that I didn't take a bite. I let Tim do that. We make some for some people and they like the yeah, they like the bit they like a bit of bitterness in it. They're so strange. we yeah they are. Well they yeah they are strange, but yeah. you know. Um, but they like it a little bit bitter, so I'll I'll jar them fifteen oh sorry, I'll jar them five kilos uh, and leave them bitter for them because that's what they want. Um, but yeah. Now, it's not precise. We don't have to. We don't have to jar them on the day. You, you've no. got a sort of a week's leeway here. And even there. even more, Tim. Even I, more. I've so heard, it's a no stress. No stress. Make. I've heard of people leaving um, olives in brine like this for years. Yeah, right. You know, it it it. But if you're really wanting to get into them, wanting yeah. to give some away as a beautiful present. Yeah. That's leave yourself right. six weeks. That's right. Now you're repurposing some jars here. You're not that's, using new ones. That's right. It's always better to reuse than recycle. So, yep. um, uh, and we get these for free. So, um, all our friends, because we give it away, all our friends collect the jars for us. They come to us washed, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool for us. And then you sterilise the jars. Yeah, we sterilise them, and then we heat them up. We set the oven to about like that 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, shove the jars in the oven. So just like making jam. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, warm the oven, warm the jars up, and then we uh, warm water up. Okay, now this is fresh water, not the brine. No, We're not just, warming the olives no, up. No, 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 this is just fresh water. Yep. It warm it up and you, the, the temperature is, stick your finger in it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not going to burn you. You're not going to leave your finger in there. That's that's about as technical as it needs to be. And you'd, what, half fill the jar with that warm water? Well, what we do is, uh, let's say you're just going to make a plain batch with mm -hmm. no herbs. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'll do is I'll fill the jar with my olives mm -hmm. and then I'll pour the water in. Okay, so olives first, warm water on top. Top. And then I seal the top with olive oil. Now I can see here you've got about half a centimetre of olive oil floating on top of the water there. That's right. And that's just going to create that impermeable barrier. That's right, yeah. It just makes yeah. that, that seal barrier. And and then you sort of go from there. And, and we put uh, garlic, paprika, uh, turmeric in, in our olives because we like these flavours. Mm -hmm. So experiment play with whatever you like you know you were saying off camera the dry herbs are often better to put in the jar than the wet herbs that's with right the exception of garlic of course yeah garlic we put fresh garlic in mm -hmm. um we don't use garlic powder i don't know maybe it's a wog thing but we always use fresh garlic um <laughs> we say that on camera much. oh sorry i'm ethnic um um we we do put balsamic vinegar in it because mm -hmm. again we like it yep um and we know balsamic vinegar and oil mix well together yeah right so it's really so some balsamic vinegar in there, some dry herbs, bit of garlic, put your olives in, put the water in, put olive oil on top, top. to seal it, close the lid, cools down, reseals, should keep forever. That's right, yep. They don't last forever because you end up eating them. <laughs> what a great way to use produce that can be easily grown on most small farms. That's right. So guys, if you've got a small farm or a small property, get yourself some olive trees, making fresh olives and enjoying them with your friends couldn't be simpler just ask sam how to do it and if you're looking to preserve your lifestyle don't forget to have a look at the link for farm style insurance because you could end up saving money and with better coverage sam thanks very much mate. absolute pleasure tim anytime good on you cheers mate